these are the most heartbreaking moments in F1 history. That is like, you know. I would have been even wrong with this embassy, but anyway, thank you. Oh, no, no! And we gotta start with Lando Norris, because what he went through was simply heartbreaking. After earning pole position at the Russian Grand Prix, Lando was about to win his first F1 race. But unfortunately, disaster happened. At its wettest, you can see the rain signs there. Lando, what do you think about it, Inter? What do you think about it, in Inter? No! Hamilton takes the lead of the race as Lando Norris slides off the track! I could have won the race and I didn't, so uh, I'm never going to be happy like this. This made him finish just P7. Man, that sucks. But it wasn't as bad as what Michael Schumacher had to go through. Days before the Imola Grand Prix, Michael and Ralph Schumacher flew to be with their mother as she was very ill. They did come back to Imola, hoping to have a normal race. But nothing was normal anymore, because just a few hours before race start, they got to know that their mother passed away. Everyone thought they wouldn't be able to race because of this, but the two men did otherwise. They still got in their cars, and Michael won the race, with Ralph finishing fourth. When Michael got on the podium, tears were seen in his eyes, and he told everyone that she would have wanted them to race. May she rest in peace. But you know what else is heartbreaking? Charles Leclerc losing a race. But due to no fault of his own? At the Bahrain GP, the 21-year-old at the time was showing his incredible racing skills. Everyone thought this was the race where he'll earn his first F1 win, but sadly, that didn't happen. There's something strange with the engine. What's happening? So Lewis Hamilton takes the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix. The turbo energy recovery system of his Ferrari had mechanical problems. This forced him to give up P1, even though he was the best driver out there. Man, Ferrari needs to get their sh together. But losing a race is still better than what happened to Nicky Lauda, because what he went through was simply horrible. At the Nürburgring, Nicky Lauda tried to stop all drivers from racing due to the terrible weather and track conditions, but it didn't work and the race still continued. And since track conditions were bad, what happened next shocked the world. Lauda miscalculated a move, crashed right into the fence and burst into flames. Now, as if this wasn't bad enough, an incoming driver who didn't know about this also drove right into the racing corner and crashed into Lauda's burning car. This made things worse as it became harder for Lauda to get out. Ultimately, he got out of the car but ended up with major burns to his head, hands and hair and also inhaled poisonous fumes that affected his lungs. Even though he survived, thank God, this still became one of the most heartbreaking moments in F1 history. But you know what else was heartbreaking? How about the time when Ricardo got humiliated by Red Bull in front of the entire F1 grid? Or when one driver crashed so horribly that it ended his F1 career forever? We'll get to all of that in this video. But first, let's talk about when George Russell was brutally destroyed by his own team, Mercedes. George stood in for Lewis Hamilton at the Bahrain GP and was given his first chance to race for Mercedes. Now, even though he was racing beautifully and was running P1 in his first ever Mercedes race, he still couldn't win due to a huge mistake made by the team. During a pit stop, Mercedes crew mistakenly placed Bottas' tyres on George's car. This forced Russell to stop again, which dropped him to fifth place. But even though he regained back to P2 and was very close to overtake Perez for the lead, another problem hit Russell. His left tyre got punctured, which forced him to stop again and ultimately finished ninth. I'm absolutely gutted, but... That's George Russell's chance of a podium absolutely gone now. It was incredible and it obviously just was not meant to be for us yesterday, so... Russell was simply torn by this. I mean, anybody would be. Except Leclerc, of course. But Russell's moment wasn't as sad as what happened at Belgium Grand Prix, because that was simply devastating. It was 1982, Belgian Grand Prix. Nobody could have possibly imagined what was going to happen there in qualifying. The ever-confident Gilles Villeneuve got behind the wheels of his Ferrari. And just when qualifying was about to end, Gilles, who was testing his last set of qualifying tyres at full speed, crashed right into another car in a horrific manner. His Ferrari flew into the air and then somersaulted violently. Anyone who saw the wreckage knew it was the end. 
and since Gilles was badly injured, he did pass away seven hours later. Nothing about that weekend mattered anymore, as a rare gem was lost forever. But you know what else was heartbreaking? The moment when Red Bull humiliated Ricardo in front of the entire F1 grid. It was 2016, Monaco GP. Daniel Ricciardo had earned pole position and was the favourite to win. The race started under rain, but later it stopped, which naturally made every driver come into the pits to get on the slicks, since Hamilton was P2 and had switched his tyres a couple of laps before Ricardo in order to undercut him, the Bulls were under pressure. And so that pit stop became Ricardo's worst nightmare. They have got the tyres ready! The tyres aren't ready! The cool, the tyres weren't ready! Super soft tyres! Hamilton took the lead and won the race. This created something which was never seen before, the angry side of Daniel Ricciardo. He was furious with the team, but was torn as well. But in 2018, all of this changed, as Ricciardo finally got redemption. Today in Monte Carlo, it's Redemption Day for Daniel Ricciardo. He wins the Monaco Grand Prix. So I, I finally feel like the redemption is, has arrived. <laughs> Now that's some good racing, but at least Ricardo got to have his redemption, unlike the other Red Bull driver who couldn't and was even forced to leave F1. Everybody knows who Helmut Marko is, but what you might not know is that he used to be a world-class racing driver. He had won the 24-hour Le Mans twice in a row, along with his F1 career going strong, but then at the French GP, everything changed. Marco was racing well when suddenly a stone launched by the vehicle ahead of him flew right through his visor and into his left eye. This briefly made him unconscious, but was still lucky enough to be pulled from the car. Although Marco's life was saved, the final verdict was still sad. And after several weeks of intense pain, it was revealed that Helmut Marco would never race again because his left eye couldn't be saved. Man, that's heartbreaking. But you know what else is heartbreaking? The moment when this next driver lost the championship in the worst possible way. Throughout 1986, Nigel Mansell was one of the favourites to win the F1 driver's title. Even on the final race day, Nigel himself was convinced that the championship was his, even though Alain Prost and Nelson Piquet were also fighting for the title with only a few points behind. Nigel, along with Ayrton Senna, Nelson Piquet, Keke Rosberg and Alain Prost were at the forefront of the race. But at a point, Mansell got in the lead. The race was going well for the British driver and the championship title was just a few laps away. But sadly, that didn't happen. On the 65th lap at 180 miles per hour, his tyre blew up and in just a millisecond, Nigel Mansell's championship chance was over. This broke Nigel, who even looked close to tears after the race. Man, that sucks. But now that we're getting into the top three heartbreaking moments, let's take things to a whole new level. Like the time when a brutal crash ended the career of one of the best drivers in F1 history. Robert Kubica had so much potential and was even considered for the driver position of Ferrari. But all of that went away when he got involved in a crazy incident in 2011. The then 27-year-old was participating in the Ronde di Andorra, a minor rally in Italy, and shortly after the race started, he got involved in a high-speed incident as he crashed into a barrier near the church wall. This incident was so brutal that it took the rescue team about one hour to get him out of the car. Some reports even showed that the barrier pierced through the car's footwell into the cockpit. Due to this, his arms and legs were badly fractured and it took several surgeries to rescue them. Although he was saved and made an inspiring return to the grid in 2017, he wasn't the same anymore, as his performance level was way less than before. Imagine, if only he didn't have the incident. But you know what else was heartbreaking? The moment when Lewis Hamilton lost something big, which he can never forget. Hamilton was closing in to get the 2016 championship, and since he had six races remaining, he was supposed to have no issues winning that year's title. But all of that changed at that year's Malaysian Grand Prix. Hamilton was leading the race, even to his surprise, as he had issues with the car. But nevertheless, he was still glad to be ahead. Sadly, that wasn't for long, because at the end of the race, his car's engine failed and was forced to retire. There's a fire at the back of that Mercedes car. Oh, no, no! That puts a bit more relevance on that squabble at Red Bull, doesn't it? This left Hamilton angry, but even more heartbroken. 
because what made it worse was that this loss made him lose the championship as well, since the final difference was only five points. It has all gone terribly, terribly wrong. All those points disappear when you've worked so hard to, to, to get them. Man, if he only had no car issues. But at least Hamilton lost due to problems with the car, unlike this other driver, who even though did everything correctly, still lost the championship. Ferrari's Felipe Massa and McLaren's Hamilton were the strong contenders for 2008 championship, and since the championship went down to the final race, Massa was determined to win it, one of the reasons being it was held on Massa's hometown, Brazil. So right from qualifying to the race performance, Massa was on fire. He finished on pole and was performing spectacularly during the race. Massa was ahead most of the time in Sao Paulo, and ultimately, he finished first. His family, fans, everybody cheered so loud that it became one of the race highlights of its own. The Brazilians jubilated because they assumed Massa won the championship, but that celebration lasted only 39 seconds, because what they didn't realize is that on the last lap, Hamilton gained a position and finished fifth. This gave him the sufficient points he needed to win the title. Victory had never been this short before. Although Hamilton did nothing wrong and won it fair and square, Massa understandably was heartbroken. But still, he took it like a champ, and like a great warrior he is, he thanked all his fans for the support he got over the years. I would have been even wrong with the embassy, but anyway, thank you. He deserved it just as much as Hamilton did. Now that's sportsmanship. But look, I know this got a little emotional. So to change the mood, you gotta watch the craziest moments in F1 history. Like the moment when one driver took out seven cars out of the race, all at once. Or the never-before-seen clip of Lewis Hamilton's cheeky move, which changed Mercedes' future forever. So what are you waiting for? Just click it.